Hey guys, I am here at Wrapworks today in Mission Viejo. I have known the owner, Chris Young Ash, here for many years. They do phenomenal work and have a really awesome shop. Uh, we are going to learn today a little bit about how to clay a car, doing some detailing basics. I've got a AMG GTS back there, which I'm going to be prepping for a wrap. It's going to be wrapped satin white, and then hopefully we're going to ceramic coat it once it's wrapped. So I'll take a little look here. It's really dirty, huh? Not for long, though. Oops, I tripped. So what I've got here for clay is Shine Mist, which is Shine Supplies Clay Lube, and then this Clay Magic Clay Bar, a fine grade. There's different grades of clay. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a time lapse so that you guys can see me wash the car before I clay it. So I've got my detailing bucket, my pump sprayer, and everything I need to do for the job. It is relatively simple and not very tough. So while I do this, uh, there's multiple kinds of clay. There's fine grade, there's medium grade, there's heavy, uh, which depends on how much contamination is on the vehicle. Although a heavy clay bar will leave a ton of scratching behind that needs to be polished out. Uh, a fine clay bar may leave some marring behind if you don't clean it out enough as you go. Um, oh, I just lost my train of thought there. Yeah, so it might leave some marring behind. So generally after claying, it's good, you wanna polish. So now we've got a nice clean car. So we're gonna start on claying soon. This thing is pretty badass. I love these cars. Uh, it sounds real mean too. So again, we've got a Shine Supply Shine Mist clay lube, although you can use any clay lube or even a waterless wash or soap and water. Uh, you can clay with foam, uh, just anything to lubricate the surface. So as you're claying, you're not scratching up the paint with contaminants. So I'm going to grab out my clay bar. I'm trying to reach in there for a fresher one. There we go. Keep your clay clean. If you drop it on the ground, uh, throw it away and or wash it off real good and fold it up. So I'm gonna start by folding it. So we can, folding it basically pushes contaminants inside and you know any minor dirt particles so that you have a fresh piece. Uh, and clay is usually pretty, <laughs> I just messed up there. Uh, clay is usually pretty tough to work with depending on the brand. This one in particular takes some elbow grease to fold, uh, at least while it's fresh out of the bag but you want to get into a nice little flat bar so that you can easily do this on the paint. I've also got a wet towel. I like to go over panels after I've clayed them to wash uh, contaminants off because sometimes you'll notice that there's dirty, what looks like dirty water basically on the panel after you've clayed it, uh, or dirty clay lube in this case. So I'll go over it with a wet towel before I dry the car. So clay is basically it. It's clay and it's taking contaminations off. So you want to do small sections, do, you know, because you want to focus and get the contaminants off. This car in particular was not very contaminated. One way to tell if a car is heavily contaminated is the paint feels really rough. So clay came up pretty clean. Uh, if it's dirty or nasty, usually it'll turn like an orangey brown color. And then once you get that, you fold it in uh, so you have a nice fresh blue surface. On a car that's not so bad, you might not have to concentrate in one spot. You can go a little bit wider. You can do kind of faster arm movements. Uh, but there will be some cars where you're like, oh my god, this is going to take me forever. You can just feel it dragging because the paint feels like sandpaper. There were a couple parts of this car where the paint felt a little bit rough. And if it feels rough you want to make sure you go over it again. So here I go, folding the clay. 
Because sometimes what happens is you'll clay the car and then you'll put your hand over it and it'll still feel kind of rough. And that means you didn't quite get all of the contaminants out. Clay doesn't remove all contaminants. That's why we buy fallout removers like Iron X. We'll do another video on those at some point. But the reason for this is so in this case to make the film adhere better and so you, there's no crap you know under the film uh, that could potentially cause like an imperfection to show normally for most of us detailers we're claying a car before we wax it before we put a coating on it uh, definitely before you polish it because if you try to polish a dirty car uh, that's contaminated you're basically just polishing those contaminants into the paint which could potentially do more damage or leave buffer trails behind or other uh, buffing marks that could be difficult to remove later. Sometimes on cars where, you know, it's a big wide hood like this, uh, it's hard to reach certain places. Uh, that's okay. A lot of us struggle with that. Generally, if you're polishing the car afterwards it's okay if your pant leg touches the fender or something just always make sure you're wearing gym shorts or some sort of soft clothing so if that does happen so see now i've done that section i'm folding it up again so i can get a nice clean surface i'm gonna spray some more shine mist on there uh, the center of the hood felt kind of bad so i'm going at it again generally the places that build the contamination the fastest and the worst panels are going to be the hood the trunk the roof, all the top panels that are most exposed. So typically a roof will have more contamination than any other part of the car. You might find that it takes you a minute to do a door uh, where you might spend a few minutes on a roof claying it. Shout out to Paul Walker. I've got my Remember Paul shirt on uh, that I got at the first Paul Walker Memorial Meet uh, in Santa Clarita thrown on by the Walker family and uh, the purist group. Rest in peace, dude. So again, just doing swipes. Uh, you don't necessarily need to put a lot of pressure unless the contamination is really bad. So obviously the more pressure you put, the more marring you're gonna create. Marring is fine scratching like swirl marks. Uh, and then obviously if you're not polishing your car, you're just going to put some wax or like a basic coating on, you might end up with more imperfections in your paint than you had before. <laughs> Once you clay the car and you've gotten the contaminants off, the paint becomes really shiny uh, because contaminations hide gloss. I would generally recommend uh, when you're doing this uh, to wear gloves or to have a towel put down so that when you're leaning on the car, you're uh, not necessarily touching the paint, which could your hand could even scratch it up more. Uh, this car is getting wrapped, so I'm not horribly concerned because it has a bunch of watermarks and other crap on the finish. Um, you'll probably see in some of my videos that I don't always practice what I preach, but I have weird ways of doing things. So now I'm drying all the clay lube off. So the surface now feels really smooth and it would normally be ready for polishing or clear bra or vinyl wrap or a coat of wax, whatever you're doing to the car. <laughs> Make sure you're thorough with drying because sometimes clay lube can leave some smears behind. Shine mist is usually pretty good about it. So now I'm going to show you something that can happen sometimes. Uh, if See how nice and shiny it is compared to other panels? But I'm going to show you what happens sometimes when you have things like vents or whatever that get in the way. As you can see, there's little pieces of clay that got caught on there. So you should always be careful of that. Uh, it can get caught on the edges of clear bra. So I'm going to blow that out later because I can't get it with my finger. Um, but it can get caught on the edges of things or stuff like that. And then if your customer sees that, they're going to be like, what the hell? Why is there all this blue or whatever color clay you're using everywhere? And it's not going to make you look that great. So 
so always double check. Usually, uh, if you, you know you get it on the edge of clear bra or something, if you catch it right away and you have a pressure washer or something, you can blast it right off. So I've got my clay, I did the hood, I'm gonna dunk it in my water bucket just to kind of clean things off, and then I'm gonna fold it some more. Again, I've got my Eco Shine from Shine Supply and uh, distilled water in the bucket. Kind of show you how crappy the roof looks before I clay it. This is such a badass car. reason I'm doing a voiceover is because I didn't want to disturb these guys. They were jamming out to some reggae music and having a good time. I didn't want to uh, disturb their work day. So I've got my clay lube, which I sprayed on the clay and on the roof. And here I go. Unfortunately, there wasn't really enough contamination on this for me to show you what contamination appears like on the credit or uh, credit <laughs> clay bar. So the next time I do a video on this with like a really bad car or when we do an Iron X video, uh, I'll show you guys with that. Here comes Snooches, the Frenchie. Saw him in the reflection. Oh, there he goes again. If you want to meet a really cute Frenchie, you should head on over to Rapworks. Again, they're right here in uh, Mission Viejo, California. Chris and I both sponsored the Gold Rush Rally this past year, uh, and we've known each other for many years. And we've ended up in some other similar situations. <clears throat> so, putting in some elbow grease there. Claying is not the easiest <clears throat> easiest task. It can uh, take a lot out of you or make your arms sore. I've been doing this for so long and you know, I've got those big buff clay arms. So it's not too bad, but I remember when I started, particularly when I was working on shitty vehicles for uh, a minimal amount of money, when I first started detailing, I was beat after a day. So here's a little time lapse of me finishing the car. Man. If only I could actually move that fast. I also forgot to wipe it with the wet towel on that side. You don't always have to do that, but I recommend it, especially on a dirty, really heavily contaminated car. So here's the final result. After I finish cleaning, it's super shiny now, has all its gloss back, but it's getting a satin white wrap. That was pretty easy, huh? So, thank you for watching.